2004 in the realm of games was a very interesting year. Games like Halo 2, Half-Life 2, and Grand Theft Auto San Andreas were competing for Game of the Year awards in the mainstream. Established series like Silent Hill and Metal Gear Solid were continuing to experiment with fan expectations. New franchises like Fable and Far Cry were capturing curious gamers' attention. It was a very busy year for the medium, but in the crowded portrait of games in 2004, Katamari Damacy was kind of a miracle. To many, a game as niche and avant-garde as The Prince's first outing didn't have a chance in hell to catch on outside of Japan. But Keita Takahashi's pet project was sharing the spotlight with some of the biggest AAA projects of the time. Katamari Damacy is a charming, endearing, shockingly well-designed game, we all know that already. But I'd say we're long overdue for another musical deep dive, so let's get started, shall we? Let's talk about Katamari Damacy's wonderful soundtrack. The original Katamari Damacy soundtrack has been praised considerably since the game's release in 2004. Its constantly varied instrumentation and wacky aesthetic direction have become central to the conversation, there's no escaping that. So many tracks have been remixed and covered to hell and back, so the OST's immediate appreciation is far from invisible. IGN even compared the soundtrack's memorability to the OSTs of Super Mario Bros., in fact. And whether or not you agree to that extent, it's clear that Katamari Damacy's music is deserving of its praise. Like the game itself, it felt unique, a clear source of appeal that was very easy to fall in love with. Katamari Damacy's director, Keita Takahashi, selected Yu Miyake as a sound director for the game after working with him on an older project called Texas 2000, leading to Miyake to work with several other composers to craft the game's now iconic soundtrack. The team was given ample creative freedom to construct the music, the kind of trust that could only lead to something truly original. In a 2009 interview with OSV, Miyake said that the goal of the composers for Katamari was to make a catchy pop soundtrack, and without question, that was a success. Katamari Damacy's Shibuya K-esque soundtrack approach overflows with mind-snaring hooks. The catchiness of the soundtrack was even compared to an evil curse, one that lingers long after the song's over. I think that's a bit grim to envision, but I'd be foolish to say that Katamari Damacy's music doesn't stick with you. Right away, before the player even begins the game, you hear the now legendary Katamari Nana theme, the kind of earworm that's impossible to ignore. As a central theme, it's the perfect lure, and once the player selects from the main menu, it's into the equally gripping main theme, Katamari on the Rocks, whose rapid-fire rhythms, triumphant horns, and uplifting vocals give the song a celebratory feeling. It's a fantastic opening track that also paints a clear picture of the game's creative direction, one that is willing to be strange, but in an almost welcoming way. But Pop Alone isn't telling the full story behind what Katamari Damacy's soundtrack's all about. When looking at how the soundtrack turned out, it's difficult to determine a single genre that covers the whole track list. Catchiness is a component, sure, but the composer's expressed creative freedom drove them to never stay in the same lane when crafting these tracks. Because all things considered, Katamari Damacy's music is incredibly eclectic. It dashes between moods and vibes like nobody's business, hooking the player and giving them a dizzying spin to experience. The Moon and the Prince is a groovy rap delight that'll stick with you right away with its scratching records and propulsive rhythms, powered up by infectious notes from the keys. You. Gin and tonic and Red Red Roses has a slithering jazzy swing to it, leaping into an uplifting tone midway through, with nimble piano keys and funky bass on full display. The 
The electronically driven fan favorite Lonely Rolling Star remains one of the highlights on the track list, with Saki Kabata's vocals sounding clean and melodious with every note. It's all so engrossing, a real spread of captivating musical concepts that constantly surprises. But even with these very memorable tracks giving the soundtrack energy, there are a number of more subdued songs too, some that, at first listen, might work against the chaotic mood of the core gameplay. As the prince absorbs more and more stuff into the Katamari, things can get hectic, but the more down-to-earth cuts quell the pandemonium of their respective stages. The smooth saxophones and airy vocals in Roll Me In are a low-key, singer-songwriter vibe, a stark contrast to the high energy of The Moon and the Prince or the main theme. It's a gorgeous, dreamy track that winds up feeling fresh and flourishing throughout Katamari Damacy's wilder moments. Even the buzzing mechanical beats of You Are Smart feel strange amongst Katamari's world, but the metronomic pace and spiraling electronic twists are oddly groovy. You're bound to find yourself nodding your head with the beat as it plays. Despite its colossal sense of scope and progression, Katamari Damacy, for the most part anyway, doesn't really sound that epic. It's incredibly humble and almost lo-fi in its aesthetic, like an up-and-coming artist composing custom vocal tracks and electronic beats in their own home studio. Not to say the music isn't professionally produced by any stretch, this is top-tier music on its own, but it's routinely surprising to hear such an eclectic tracklist on a game from a major Japanese publisher like Namco. It's fantastic that Katamari Damacy's developers were given the freedom that a game like this clearly flourishes under, and hearing the music follow suit with that game design is just as encouraging. Though it comes from a humble spirit, this is a daring soundtrack that stays true to its own, one uncompromising to the hyper-cinematic trends and zeitgeists of the game industry in 2004. It's difficult to envision any other game soundtrack acting under these parameters, and it's even harder to find one that pulls it off to this level. On a lyrical front, Katamari Damacy's songs create a sense of elegance and almost benevolence to the prince's actions. Many have made the observation that rolling up the world and making stars with the components is an apocalyptic scenario, but Katamari Damacy's lyrics don't really paint that same picture. For several songs, the act of rolling everything together is envisioned through a lens of unity and togetherness for a world that has grown distant over time. For example, Charlie Kose, best known for his work in Lupin III, shows up on the track K Sera Sera. To be a single star in the sky. He sings lyrics like, let's roll up to be a single star in the sky, contrasting the cataclysm of rolling the Katamari with a serene, romantic vibe, like being a part of the Katamari will bring people together in ways they haven't experienced in such a long time. Lonely Rolling Star tells a story from the perspective of someone eagerly waiting for the world to be fully rolled up into the Katamari so the roller themselves can return home and be with the singer again. The words loosely translated to, but you are painting an important dream. Until you're done, I'll be waiting here always, are bittersweet, a sense of longing that, at its core, is an absolutely beautiful scene. It's very odd to hear such romantic perspectives on a premise like this, but Katamari Damacy's lyricism is creative artistry at work, a unique spin on what's already a wild concept. It's strikingly emotive, and this becomes so apparent in the game's ending theme, Katamari of Love, a passionate soul crusher of a song, with pounding arena percussion, a roaring guitar solo, and Shigeru Matsuzaki's majestic vocals.
The lyrics, in an almost pleading tone, wish for the planet's inhabitants to come together in peace, to abandon the aching divisions that persist throughout our lives. This all plays during the final sequence, where the prince is rolling up the various countries of the world into a single katamari, drawing the people together as one. The track starts as the prince's cousins join hands together in a circle, illustrating a feeling of love and peaceful acceptance. The track even uses the iconic Na 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 theme from the very beginning of the game, giving this incredible piece of music context within the entire experience, that maybe the true goal from the very beginning wasn't simply to pick up the pieces of your father's drunken mistake, but to create shining stars by uniting everyone during a time when it's needed most. Even if it's just a metaphor, it's a very powerful one. While the rest of the game's OST tends to focus on a humble, almost indie aesthetic, Katamari of Love is an anthem, a larger-than-life statement that sells Katamari's idea of togetherness from start to finish. When looked at as a whole, the OST of Katamari Damacy is a real mishmash. There are so many different styles and tones presented as the player rolls around the world that it does, initially anyway, seem a bit difficult to see where the music team was going with it. Many of the greatest game OSTs of all time have had a key identity powering the music, a central theme that connects each song together. That's not quite as apparent for Katamari Damacy. Its brew of musical genres is the kind of wild amalgamation that would cause any other game to buckle beneath its own weight. It dances between styles at nearly every turn, changing moods from track to track. Like the Katamari itself, it's filled with many distinctive ideas that don't match up just right. They hold their own identity, but are bald, drawn, and clumped together by the gravity of the Katamari's essence. Katamari Damacy's OST doesn't fully make sense of itself. It's still as frantic and varied as it's always been, constantly throwing bizarre ideas into the mix. It mesmerizes the player with the kinds of infectious hooks that make any track go viral, but changes lanes into totally different genres from level to level. It's won over so many hearts simply by its catchiness and memorability alone. Beyond all that, however, there is something connecting each track together. It may not be a fully singular theme or a consistent narrative idea, but something extremely important is there. Because despite the eclecticism of its soundtrack, Katamari Damacy loosely translates to clump soul. Beneath all the clutter, the odds and ends surrounding that pole, there is a soul there. It's the keystone, the core that gives structure and order to the collective chaos. Katamari Damacy has always had that soul, giving its odd sensibilities and strange perspectives a unique vibe that no other game at the time really pursued. That's what makes the entire OST of Katamari Damacy so in tune with the game itself. There are so many things pulled together by a creative and passionate center. For all its pandemonium, what brings every idea together is the soul buried beneath it. No matter how many left turns Miyake and his fellow composers took while writing and producing the OST, it's clear that the music, like the project as a whole, has a soul connecting it all together. It's as humbly ambitious and passionate as the greatest of pet projects. Takahashi's drive to make something truly special permeates through every piece of Katamari Damacy's game design, but the music team shares that exact same drive in the soundtrack. There's passion here, a connective spirit that no other game at the time managed to fully embrace. This all sounds romanticized the more I say it, but it couldn't have happened to a more fitting game. Katamar Damacy has always held a strange place in the gaming landscape, and I'm not just talking about the crazy story or off-the-wall gameplay premise. It's an original creation, one whose appreciation has only grown over time. But I think there's something very important to note here. In the wake of soundtrack analysis videos on games like Metal Gear Rising and Hotline Miami, I can assuredly say that Katamar Damacy's soundtrack fits very close to both of those games' music. Maybe not in style, genre, or tone, but because the music has a purpose, an importance that needs polish and consideration to fully achieve its potential. Katamari Damacy's soundtrack, though, has a more ambiguous purpose. It's less about how much it complements the game's mechanics or design, and more how it builds upon the game's spirit, the soul of the clump. Keita Takahashi has made some of the most avant-garde games of the last couple of decades, but he's always done this from a humble position. Creating these weird little experiences is clearly a passion of his, and he's shared that passion with the musicians who've created Katamari Damacy's iconic soundtrack. The composers behind the game's OST brought their vast array of ideas together with the quirky soul that makes Katamari what it is. The more I listen to Katamari Damacy's soundtrack, the more I can appreciate not just the composers or Keita Takahashi himself, but the increasingly apparent push to make video game music memorable. Not necessarily catchy, mind you, but memorable. 
And yes, there are plenty of catchy tunes on this game's OST that stick in your head. But when looking at what the game industry was like in the early 2000s, it remains a blessing to see a game like this garner such a strong and appreciative following. Katamari Damacy's music, in some bizarre sense of foresight, signifies the artistically rebellious moods, styles, and attitudes that we're seeing more and more of in the independent music scene nowadays. Even considering the history of Shibuya K music, there's something unusually prescient about that. From off-kilter electronic beeps to smooth jazzy swing to colossal arena rock, this is the kind of rapid-fire eclecticism that many artists in 2022 are thrilled and driven to follow. Outlets like Bandcamp have thousands of musicians publishing their work, many refusing to conform to the palatability of record labels and rigidity of genre classification, using that dissatisfaction toward the status quo to make something that only they can make. Under this umbrella, Katamari Damacy's defining attitude predated many of the creative movements in contemporary music, especially when it comes to video game soundtracks. It was astonishingly ahead of its time. I know I'm not alone in saying that Katamari Damacy's music is an absolute treasure, well deserving of its widespread adoration. It's catchy, it's poppy, it's memorable, but beneath the clutter beats a passionate creative heart that feels as inspirational as it does experimental. So to the composers of Katamari Damacy's OST, thank you. You made something truly wonderful. <laughs>